you think? Should we just get started? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's do this. <laughs> I'm recording that they do um, show up late in the middle. We are sending out this recording in the slides, um, so they will catch anything that is missed. Great. Have we started recording yet, or we'll just start I now? Just, I just turned it on. <laughs> oh, perfect. Okay, great. Hi, my name is Simone. I am the Nutrition Program Coordinator at Berkeley Youth Alternatives. I'm also a holistic nutrition counselor and health coach. I'm really excited to be collaborating on this webinar today um, to talk with you all about the immune system and ways to support it through healthy nutrition and um, also through self-care by reducing stress. So there's a lot we can do to support our, immune, our immunity and what we choose to do each day to help ourselves stay healthy, both physically and emotionally has an impact on the strength of our immune system. Opting to choose healthy foods that nourish the body, practicing self-care to reduce stress, providing ourselves with proper hydration from water and limiting our intake of sugar and ultra processed foods sets the roots in place to strengthen the immune system. Throughout this workshop, we are going to offer tips on how to support our immune system through nourishing foods, tips on how to reduce stress through self-care, mindfulness exercises, and stretching. Supporting both the physical health and emotional health can help provide you with a strong foundation to support your immune health. Supporting the body with nutrients is an important way to support the immune system. Protein plays a role, a key role in immune function. It is what creates the components for keeping the immune system healthy. Try to get protein in at every meal. Proper hydration from water is important for many reasons. Water delivers nutrients to the cells, help pre helps prevent infections, keeps joints lubricated, organs functioning properly, improves sleep quality, cognition, and mood. Fiber boosts, boosts digestive health feeds the good bacteria in the gut and helps improve blood sugar levels. It helps reduce spikes in blood sugar by slowing the absorption of sugar. Some vitamins that are essential for supporting the immune system are vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin A, and zinc. Vitamin D is essential to optimize, oh, sorry, it is essential to optimize your vitamin D. Many of us aren't getting enough through the sun or our diets. Vitamin D tends to be lower in people that don't get exposure to sunshine or live in higher altitude places. Vitamin D deficiency is often missed in testing, yet it's been linked to diabetes, high blood pressure, cancer, heart disease, depression, fibromyalgia, chronic muscle pain, bone loss, and autoimmune diseases like multiple sclerosis. Having enough vitamin D is essential for a strong immune system. If vitamin D levels are low, you can become much more vulnerable to getting the flu. It's important to get your vitamin D levels checked and talk to a functional medicine practitioner or your regular practitioner about the optimal levels of vitamin D you should have. Vitamin A is crucial for proper immune function. Getting adequate amounts from a healthy diet should prevent symptoms of deficiency. Some symptoms of vitamin A deficiency include increased susceptibility to infections, hair loss, skin problems, and dry eyes. Vitamin A is fat soluble, so it's more effectively absorbed into the bloodstream when paired with fat. To help improve absorption of vitamin A from plant sources, consider adding some drizzles of olive oil or avocado oil on top of your food. Betic carotene contains powerful antioxidant properties. It's a plant pigment that gives red, orange, and yellow vegetables their vibrant color. Betic carotene turns into vitamin A in the body. However, not everyone is able to easily make this conversion. Vegetables such as sweet potatoes, winter squash, collard greens, kale, spinach, Swiss chard, and cooked carrots are great sources of vitamin A, as well as fruits such as mango, cantaloupe, apricots, tangerines, grapefruit, watermelon, and papaya. Some animal proteins that are extremely high in vitamin A are liver, chicken, 
eggs, especially pasteurized eggs, cheese, especially goat cheese and aged cheddar cheese, cod liver oil, and salmon. Vitamin C is an essential vitamin that is an important nutrient for immune function. Humans can't make vitamin C in the body and need to consume it regularly for the body to have proper function. Vitamin C helps the functioning of many immune cells by helping the cells get rid of unwanted invaders. Consider consuming eight to 10 fruits and vegetables every day to support your vitamin C intake. Some wonderful sources of foods that are high in vitamin C are fruits such as oranges, grapefruits, lemons, limes, kiwi, strawberries, tomatoes, papayas, and blueberries. Some vegetables are collard greens, spinach, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and kale. Herbs such as parsley, rosemary, basil, dill, oregano, cloves, and thyme are also very high sources of vitamin C. Zinc plays a crucial part in the functioning of multiple aspects of the immune system. It's an essential nutrient the body can't produce it's a central nutrient and the human body can't produce zinc and it has no storage system for it. Zinc can be found in protein sources such as seafood, like oysters, which has a ton, crab, mussels, lobster, clams, sardines, and salmon. For meat and poultry, opt to buy grass-fed and pasture-raised meat and eggs whenever possible. Some high sources of zinc are also found in beef, pork, bison, turkey, and chicken. For beans and legumes, um, you can look at lentils, black beans, and kidney beans. Some nuts and seeds are cashews, almonds, chickpeas, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, and hemp seeds. The microbiome and probiotics. Gut health is very important. 60% of the immune system is in the gut. Having a healthy gut helps the body resist infections, including colds and flu. Good protected bacteria can be a first line of defense for the immune system. The body is full of bacteria, viruses, and fungi that is collectively known as a microbiome, the bacteria of the gut. Some bacteria are associated with disease while other bacteria are extremely important for the immune system, the heart, our weight, and many other aspects of our health. A healthy gut microbiome controls gut health by communicating with the intestinal cells digesting certain foods and preventing disease causing bacteria from sticking to the intestinal, intestinal walls. Research indicates that probiotics have been shown to strengthen the immune system by decreasing the risk of intestinal infections, asthma and eczema, and shorten, shortening the length of common colds. Fiber-rich foods feed good bacteria that support the microbiome, a way to protect good bacteria that line the surfaces of the body and help to support a healthy microbiome is to eat high fiber, whole food diet that incorporates fermented foods. You can consume healthy bacteria from probiotics through food or through supplementation. Some of my favorite food sources for probiotics are fermented foods such as sauerkraut, kimchi, pickles, unsweetened yogurt, and kefir. Some foods that are unsupportive and harmful to the immune system. Heavily processed foods, including fast food, highly refined oils, soda, juice, cookies, and other foods containing refined sugars are not supportive of the body because they can increase inflammation, suppress the immune system, and have a negative impact on the microbiome. Malnutrition is the number one cause of immune deficiency worldwide. The standard American diet is high in calories, but often deficient in important vitamins, minerals, and polynutrients that are necessary for good health and a strong immune system. Sugar feeds the wrong bugs in the body, including yeast, bad bacteria, and viruses. When blood sugar is high, the immune system doesn't work well. If you have a sweet tooth, here are some natural foods to consider as a substitute for highly processed sugary foods. Berries, dates, prunes, raisins, coconut, banana, dried apricots, and slices of pineapple. Um, I often substitute sugar um, when baking um, with the following things that um, I think could be interesting to try during 
holidays when there's so many sweets being thrown at us. Um, dates and avocados I use to make a really tasty, as a, as a really tasty substitution for sh sugar when making frosting and chocolate mousses. I substitute refined sugar also for honey or maple syrup when making cakes, pies, brownies, and pancakes. If you're interested in detoxing from sugar or getting off sugar, there is this amazing free resource by Dr. Mark Hyman called the 10 Day Reset Guide, and I have it hyperlinked in this slide. I'll also put it in the chat box. Refined oils and why to avoid them. Refined oils are processed, cleaned with chemicals, and typically come from genetically modified corn, canola, or soy, and are heated to very high temperatures during processing. The heating process oxidizes the oils and the oxidation creates free radicals that can damage the cells of our bodies. Free radicals attack important molecules leading to cell damage, illness, and aging. Some examples of highly refined oils to avoid are canola oil, vegetable oil, so soybean oil, sunflower oil, corn oils, and margarines. It's good practice to always look at the ingredients of foods and oils. If you see any of these oils listed as an ingredient, it's best to avoid buying them whenever possible. Some healthy oils and butter for cooking is grass-fed butter, avocado oil, coconut oil, and extra virgin olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil is best used when not heated to anything above a warm temperature. Some powerhouse foods to help support your immune system. Fish is highly supportive of the immune system. It's rich in vitamin A, which is necessary for the immune system to function well. It contains selenium, which aids in glutathione production, a very important antioxidant and detoxifier. Fish is also full of omega-3 fats, which help reduce inflammation in the body. Consider opting for small fish like sardines and wild caught salmon over the larger fish such as tuna, swordfish, king, and king mackerel because these larger fish contain high levels of mercury. Oysters. These little amazing vitamin shots packed with incredible nutrients are one of the best sources of zinc there is. Mushrooms, an amazing food that I could talk on and on about. <laughs> Um, it's an amazing food for the immune system. Mushrooms such as shiitake, lion's mane, mataki, or even button mushrooms help improve gut immunity. They're also one of the only food sources of vitamin D. Mushrooms boost the activity of natural killer cells, which are part of your immune system. They identify and gobble up viruses and bacteria in the body, preventing them from causing illness. Garlic, onions, and ginger. Um, these are all filled with immune enhancing properties and loaded with antioxidants. A remedy that might not sound like it tastes very good, but it definitely packs a punch <laughs> when you're fighting off a cold or a flu. And it's something that I like to make at the first sign of starting to get sick. So in a blender, or if you don't have a blender, you can, you can just kind of still do it, but just like add it to a pot. But if you have a blender, that'll be ideal. And it's half a lemon juiced into the blender. You can even throw some of that rind in there too for some extra benefits. Um, two small cloves of garlic, about one teaspoon of onions chopped, about one teaspoon of ginger, honey, a few dashes of cayenne pepper, but you can add more if you'd like it hot, <laughs> a few dashes of cinnamon and two cups of water. Blend this all up and add it to the pot on your stove and let it simmer until warm. You can also throw in some Bragg's apple cider vinegar as well for some additional antimicrobial and antioxidant benefits. And then you can turn this into a soup. Um, you can drink this as a tea, um, use it as a base for a broth. Um, it's a really amazing remedy that um, myself and my family have used for many, many years. <laughs> um, bone broth is filled with important vitamins and minerals and aids in digestion of other foods. The connective tissue found in bone broth provides glucosamine, natural com a natural compound found in cartilage that are known to support joint health. The marrow provides omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids vitamin A, vitamin K2, and minerals like zinc, iron, manganese, and selenium. 
It's also important to note that the strength in the vitamins and minerals in a bone broth is going to depend on the source of the animal you're getting it from. So when possible, um, you know, opt for grass-fed, pasture-raised, wild or organic when sourcing broths for meat or fish. You can also buy whole chicken and use the bones and you know, all the organs um, to make your own broth, um, which is definitely a much more cost-effective way to do it. <laughs> um, I take the extras and freeze it and, you know, just swap it out when I'm ready for a new batch. Berries are packed with antioxidants, help improve blood sugar and insulin response. They contain anti-inflammatory properties. They're high in fiber, help lower cholesterol and help improve the function of the arteries. In addition to all of this, they provide lots of nutrients. Broccoli is also an amazing source of vitamins, mineral, fiber, and antioxidants. It has bioactive compounds that can reduce inflammation in the body's tissues, support healthy brain function, improve blood sugar control, and boost immunity. My favorite way to cook broccoli is to do a quick steam with it. Once off the stove, I add fresh lemon juice, some salt, pepper, and some drizzles of olive oil on top. It's about a eight minute meal. <laughs> um, avocado, my favorite, contains high amounts of nutrients, healthy fats, lots of important vitamins such as folate and vitamin K. It's high in potassium and fiber and can help lower your cholesterol. So self-care, taking a step back and asking yourself, what are some areas of self-care that you can do for yourself and where are you lacking in this? Questions such as, how is your sleep? Are you giving your body time to rest? How is your stress? How is your diet? Are you getting enough water intake? Are you taking in too much sugar? All of these questions or areas of self-care are key for helping to strengthen the immune system as well as physical and emotional health. When we engage in healthier habits through diet, sleep, relaxation, and exercise, we can help support our immune system. Stress, much like sugar, decreases the immune system. Research shows that high stress, large amounts of sugar, and not getting enough nutrients to support how the immune function works can decrease and suppress the immune system because stress places the immune system on edge and can cause the body to be less resilient to infection. Try to ask yourself each day how you wanna take care of yourself. Having an activity or a hobby to look forward to is supportive for emotional health. Thinking about what techniques help you as an individual feel less stressed is an important first step in incorporating stress reduction techniques into your daily routine. Meditation, walks, hiking, being in nature, taking hot baths with Epsom salt, incorporating essential oils, breathing exercises, stretching, and yoga are all very beneficial. Mindful movement is about tuning into your body and asking yourself what you need. Find a way to move that makes both your body and mind feel good. Again, going for a walk or a hike or simply stretching has a wonderful impact. Give yourself permission to just slow down and enjoy special moments and take care of yourself. Allow yourself to recenter and focus before you move on with daily tasks. If you can tell that your body or your mind is overly exhausted, it's important to allow yourself to give your body what it needs. And sometimes that can just simply be to slow down and rest. When you wake up in the morning and each night before you sleep, consider maybe writing down or just even thinking to yourself three things that you're grateful for. It's a really beautiful way to honor yourself and take time to say thank you to your body. Self-love is a multifaceted concept. Like any other relationship in life, the one you have with yourself requires nurturing, patience, and kindness. Breathing exercises. Research shows that taking deep breaths activates the vagus nerve that shifts your metabolism from fat storage to fat burning and can quickly move you out of a stress state. If you're having a stress response, take five slow, deep breaths in and out to the count of five and repeat this five times. Try to work on managing stress and getting proper sleep. 
Getting into a restful sleep mode can be difficult at night. A stressed mind tends to race with thoughts, to concern, or do lists. And practicing mindfulness breathing exercises, such as the 478 breath developed by Dr. Weil, can help bring the body back into a state of deep relaxation by allowing the body to replenish its oxygen and clear the mind. The 478 breath and other forms of breath work and meditation forces the mind and body to focus on regulating the breath instead of focusing on that stressor. The 478 breath technique is not only beneficial for helping you to fall asleep at night, but also helping to soothe anxiety and aid in promoting calm and relaxation. Dr. Weil describes this technique as a natural tranquilizer for the nervous system. Relaxation practices help bring the body back into balance and regulate that fight or flight response that is felt when we are stressed. And now over to my amazing coworker <laughs> that's gonna teach us more about relaxation and meditation and all the great things we can do for mind and body. All right, so just introduce myself. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Alana Javier. I'm the Spark Health Program Coordinator for BYA. Um, and I will be discussing stretching with, with for the body and mind. So most of us experience a good amount of stress daily and there never seems to be enough time in the day that stress builds up without realizing it, creating physical and mental stiffness. Stretching can be an effective strategy for preventing and alleviating stress by lengthening the muscles to relieve tension. So stretching is a fundamental way to improve your overall health and fitness. Uh, beginning a regular flexibility program into your routine can help with the following. Improve circulation, improve range of motion, improve posture, decrease joint stiffness and muscle tension, and improve your ability to relax. So a proper stretching technique. I would say for balanced stretching, you definitely want to make sure you or stretching both sides evenly. Do not stretch one side more than the other. Do not overstretch. Um, when you are stretching, you will feel a slight tension or pull on that muscle, but do not go past that point of pain or discomfort. You want to prevent injury. Uh, remember to go slow. Hold the stretch for about 15 seconds. Um, later in these slides, you'll also hear we say, you know, hold a stretch for X amount of breaths or five counts, that's fine as well. But also to remember to go slow. Um, once you release out of that stretch, you're also continuing to go slow. Um, never bounce while stretching. This can cause injury if a muscle is pushed beyond its limit. And remember to breathe. Um, flexibility exercises should be relaxing, deep, easy. Even breathing is key to relaxation. Never hold your breath while stretching. Um, remember that a complete stretching routine can take as little as 10 minutes. Um, the best time to stretch is after you've warmed up or after exercise. This is when your muscles are the warmest and you can use the relaxation. Focus on stretching the muscles you use the most during your specific exercise. So stretching for a better you. And 
just want to share a study in 2014 by the American Journal of Sports Science and Medicine. They showed that static stretching activates your parasympathetic nervous system and inhibits your sympathetic nervous system. What are these, Alana? What are these nervous systems? I will tell you. Um, so <laughs> these are two human nervous systems. Um, your parasympathetic nervous system is responsible for your rest and digestion um, functions. It can also help induce feelings of calmness and relaxation. So for this study, um, they studied 20 non-smoking healthy male adults between the ages of 18 to 20 years old. They tested their blood pressure and heart rate for measured pre and post. So what happened is that there's two different static stretches. So just or stretching in general um, that they performed um, and it conducted ac actively, meaning that as they were stretching, the sympathetic nerve system activated and was more dominant. I'm not sure if you can see it. I know the font is pretty small in this slide. Again, I will send these slides out. The sympathetic nervous system is so when they're stretching, their heart rate was increasing during the stretch. But what the study was about is they want to see that after stretching, will the parasympathetic nervous system kick in? So lower heart rate, um, more relaxation and calmness. So what they did find was that after about four or five minutes of post-stretching, their parasympathetic nervous system was more was dominant after stretching. That was pretty cool. <laughs> um, again, the title of the of the journal is in the slide before. Um, if you definitely want to read up on it, um, you can get the information from the slides that I sent out. All right. So full or sorry, <laughs> stretching before getting out of bed. Um, so I'm just going to go over a couple of stretches that you can do before you get out of bed. Um, and a couple of slides before I said stretching is best when you're warm or after exercise. Uh, believe it or not, is that we are warm <laughs> um, after we get out of bed. You know, we're warm, we're in a blanket, we're tucked in, we're relatively warm. So before you step out of the bed, think about stretching. Um, and I'll get into the benefits of that after these. So full body stretch. Um, these are the directions. So first you wanna inhale. Reach your arms above your head, clasp your fingers together, and flip your palms out forward. And it's, but it's gonna be over your head. But if you can't do that, definitely just stretch your arms above you um, and push your palms away from you. At the same time, reach your toes away from your arms, keeping your knees straight. Hold this full stretch position for five counts. And exhale and release the stretch. You can repeat this three times. Um, this releases tightness throughout the entire body, which tends to accumulate during sleep. And next stretch is knees to chest. From a supine position, so supine is laying on your back. Uh, bend your knees until the soles. So the soles of your feet, the bottom of your feet are on the bed. Use your hands to draw one knee in towards your chest at a time, wrapping your arms around both shins, or you can just wrap your arms around your knee. Uh, relax your head on your pillow and hold this self-hug for 10 deep breaths. Um, this, stretch help, this stretch helps with gently uh, wake up the low back and stimulate the mind and body, helping you feel ready to start your day. Next one is a supine twist. So from the knees to chest position, gently release your knees to the left. Um, and then turn your head in the opposite direction if it's comfortable to do so. If any of this is uncomfortable, do not do it. Um, definitely reach out to myself or Simone if you have, if you have any questions um, and we can look for something to modify that. Once you're in this position, hold it for five to 10 breaths before pulling your knees back to your chest and releasing once again on the opposite side. Hold for five to 10 breaths. This stretch is fantastic for loosening up the back and spine. And the next one is a seated forward bend. Gently sit yourself up, stretching your legs out in front of you. 
So you're reaching for your toes, you're stretching your hamstring, which is the muscle behind your legs. Um, give your feet and toes a little wiggle and reach forward into a seated forward bend. Then as far as comfortable as you can, placing your hands, either if you can reach for your toes, great, or your heels, your shins, or your knees. Again, do not over stretch. You wanna hold this position for three to five breaths. What I find easiest for me, especially in, I can't, there's times I can't reach my toes. So for a deeper stretch, what you can do is you can inhale as you're sitting straight up, inhale, and then as you're exhaling, then move forward towards your feet. Again, go as far as you can comfortably. Um, I'll give you some more range of motion. And last stretch, you can do a spinal reach. Same thing as you were doing over your head as you're lying down, but this time you're sitting up, you cross your legs and just reach forward. Um, from here, you'd be moving from your left, sorry, this is my right, <laughs> and then to your left. Um, so keep your spine straight, reach your arms up over your head, interlock your fingers and palms facing up. Uh, gently bend to the right, holding for a moment and gently bend to the left. Repeat these bends for three times, three to five times while continuing to stretch upwards, then relax. Um, yeah, so those are a couple of stretches. Um, I didn't want to overwhelm you with stretching, but there are a lot out there. Again, do what is best for you. Um, just from experience, I also, I also have plantar fasciitis is when you're when the muscles and the tendons are pulling from underneath your feet. And so you may feel once you place your feet on the ground after, you know, after you get off the bed and you feel that tightness, that's plantar fasciitis. So make sure you're also extending and flexing your foot. Sorry, I don't have a slide for that. Um, but yeah, so extend and flexion of the foot will help loosen up the tendons in your foot and also pretty much warm up your calves. So it's not pulling so much on your foot and activating that plantar fasciitis. So some benefits, um, stretching before getting out of bed. If you're fortunate enough to wake up with no pain, you're lucky. <laughs> stretching before getting out of bed does not have to relieve pain. It can also be to improve mood and decrease mental fatigue. Uh, focus on controlling your thoughts and breathing with purpose. Use this time to reflect on your day and strategize your day. Take a moment for yourself. Bring awareness to your body and tailor your day to what your body needs. Um, I do also, <laughs> more of an ending, I do want to share a five-minute guided meditation. Um, and I'm going to pull that up. So this guided meditation is a mindful meditation by Dr. Robert um, Diane Brown. So let me just share with you just a second. I'm gonna do a little test to make sure you hear this first. Just give me, if someone give me a thumbs up if you could hear. Welcome to your meditation. I'm Dr. Robert Eric Dinenberg, and I'll guide you through from start to finish. Mindfulness is present moment attention without judgment. For this meditation, we'll attend to our feet with mindfulness. And then we'll move on to the breath and the abdomen. And then to finish, we'll return to the feet. So let's get started. With mindfulness, start to observe your feet. Answer this question to yourself. What does it feel like to have my feet on the ground in this present moment? Explore this present moment experience of your feet. You might notice what it feels like to have your feet in your shoes, in your socks. You might observe different points of pressure presenting to different parts of your feet. And you might notice temperature. Simply observe whatever you notice. There's no right or wrong, no good or bad. 
whatever you notice is okay. And anything that takes you away from this noticing is a distraction. Any thought about the future or the past, any worry or expectation, any internal notice and let go with forgiveness, with patience, notice and let go, notice and let go. And shepherd your attention back to your feet. And when you're ready, let go of your feet and shift your attention to your abdomen. Here we find the home base for mindfulness of breathing. Observe what it feels like to breathe in this present moment. Explore and discover your own way of noticing your own breath. You might observe a rising of your abdomen as you breathe in and a falling as you breathe out. Your own way of noticing your own breath might include registering an expanding feeling as you breathe in and a deflating feeling as you breathe out. Ride the waves of your breath with your attention. Anything that takes you away from your breath is a distraction. Any thought about the future or the past, any worry or internal dialogue, any expectation or judgment, Notice and let go. Notice and let go. With forgiveness. Notice and let go. And time and time again, shepherd your attention back to your breath. Back to answering this very simple question. What does it feel like to breathe in this present moment? When you're ready to transition out of the meditation, return to your feet. This time there can be some movement in your toes and notice what it feels like to be moving your toes in this present moment. And let this movement transition you out of the meditation. So as your fingers are moving and if you wish your body's stretching, you can transition fully out of the meditation. Great. So if anyone, well, you can come, there's not a lot of us. So if you wanted to come off camera and say kind of just how that made you feel, or you can enter in the chat box. I just want to know if that helped or worked for you. I've listened to this guided meditation maybe like 10 times today. <laughs> I was going to say, can you put the link in the chat, please? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that was so relaxing. <laughs> Did I close it out? Oh, no. I have everyone's attendance. Um, with this, I'll uh, when we send out the slides and the recording, um, I'll also put the link for that meditation in there. Um, yeah, that was great. Yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. It's so important, I think, too. You know, like I've been trying in the morning before even getting out of bed, just kind of practicing some of those techniques that we were talking about, about just kind of like being in your body and being present and like thinking about your intentions for the day and like you know steps that you can take to like 
slow down a bit. Um, I think it's like a really good practice before just like jumping out of bed and like Right. getting the day started and doing all the things and being pulled in tons of different directions. And of course, like if you have kids, that can be a little bit harder to get that morning time in, but, um, you know, even like yeah. setting an alarm for yourself to just have that little bit of time for yourself. They do have kids. What for myself, I learned like my daughter's wake up time is like seven, between seven and eight. Sometimes I'll set an alarm for 5 30, 6 o'clock and just have me time. If that's even just catching up on a show, reading a book, stretching, um, that's me time. Even if it's just for 15 minutes before she wakes up. It's that's great. I'll definitely as a parent, take advantage of. I know <laughs> yeah. in, but honestly, that me time is worth it. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> it's like 15 minutes of sleep or me. <laughs> <laughs> that's me time too <laughs> sleeping yeah totally oh my gosh absolutely <laughs> for anyone that's interested in that um that sugar detox free course um i'm putting the link for that in oh it didn't hyperlink for some reason um but i'm putting that in the chat box um this is offered by dr mark hymans who is a hero of mine <laughs> um uh, the nutrition interns, Malika and Malika, who are on the call right now, uh, use a lot of his research um, for our nutrition curriculum. Um, so he's got some really great resources on his website. And the link is getpharmacy.com free. And yeah, that's like a really incredible um, course that he offers. He offer, also offers a sleep course as well um, for free. Um, and then I was wondering, is Araceli on right now? Um, let me see if I can find you on here. Yeah. If you're on Araceli, you can um, just take yourself off of mute or just um, add or just say hi in the chat box. Um, I know you had a couple of questions about um, some uh, information that you'd like on allergies and um, uh, in a sore neck. So I wanted to make sure I answered that for you. And then, hi, Jessica. I hope I answered your question. Um, but I can definitely, we can definitely talk more about that offline. Or um, should we open up if anybody has a, a question, a couple questions to ask? Jessica, I see, but I think you're on mute. Oh, there oh, you go. Uh, Hi. Um, did I hear you say you use guacamole to sweeten stuff up? Oh, yeah. I actually, I should, I'll send you the recipe. Um, I, it. <laughs> I just thought I was hearing things. I got some guacamole. I got, I just, I, I just, I don't know. I guess it's, um, with baking, oh yeah, I forgot my question. That threw me off. I said, "Did she say guacamole?" Um, <laughs> avocado, avocado. <laughs> yeah, avocado. See, that's how much I know avocado. With it, um, when you were talking about how much time we got, is there? I don't know. I did. So it's been a long day. I just went for a blank. But oh, you know, the little, oh, the little, never, the little yeah. uh, can you send the, the recipe for the immune booster that you said? Absolutely. Definitely. I'll text that to you. Okay. Or if you um, want to put it, uh, your email in the chat box, I can um, email it to you too. Okay. Thank you. You're I'm welcome. Sorry. But yeah, um, you know, the uh, the avocado and the um, uh, and the dates uh, sounds so strange. But honestly, I have served it to so many people, and they couldn't even tell there wasn't sugar in it. Like they had, I told them that it was dates and avocado, and they were like, "What?" <laughs> I swear. <laughs> uh, 
um it just it creates this like mousse texture and um, then of course you add like cocoa powder and cayenne pepper and salt and all that but it creates this like mousse texture and if you freeze it you can make it into like an icing um or it's like a put a pudding or yeah it's like so tasty but I know it sounds it sounds gnarly <laughs> I got a question for you, Simone. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> um, I've been taking elderberry vitamins to increase my zinc, my zinc intake, especially during the winter. Like you mentioned um, to you. I don't know if you know too much, but is there a difference between taking the actual like chewable gummy um, elderberries versus drops? Yeah, so it's gonna be more potent in a liquid. Form because that's going to go directly into your bloodstream. Um, I'll send you, there isn't, because elderberry can be pretty expensive um, mm -hmm. and it's actually like pretty easy to make. I think it takes like 20 minutes. Um, but I will also send you during the break, there is some controversial data on taking elderberry right now during COVID, mm -hmm. though that was like recently debunked, but maybe just so you can kind of see and then weigh like whether or not, you know, you want to be taking it. Um, I, I, I personally would, um, but, you know, I think as long as your, you know, your zinc levels, um, whether you're supplementing, you know, which might be good right now to do, um, or you're getting enough through food, um, you want those levels to be around like 15 milligrams to 25 milligrams, especially like, you know, during COVID and then during like any flu season. And I want oysters. Like, I wish oysters were <laughs> available. If you go to, well, if you go to a certain market, you know, you can get a big bag. But of course, it's also, you know, cooking it. It's, you know, are you going to put in the grill? Or how do you chuck? Like, you know, then you have to chuck the oyster. It's expensive. It is. I always eat them raw. I've never had them cooked. But where do you, what, what markets? Oh, like farmer's markets, probably, right? For me, like I'll go to like a local Asian market actually. Um, oh. And they sell them, um, you know, big in bags and they're huge. And, you know, my family and I will put them on a grill. So, but I don't know if like cooking them will reduce the amount of nutrients that you actually should be getting. I don't know. I don't, I've, actually, I have had them, I have had them cooked once in the South. <laughs> I take that back. <laughs> um, I don't know. I could eat like a dozen and a half of those to myself. Oh. <laughs> Raw. <laughs> Did anybody else have any um, have any questions for us? I know um, there was a question about juicing as opposed uh, versus uh, smoothies. And which would be more, um, you know, have higher uh, health benefits, um, and it's it's definitely going to be the um, the blending versus juicing because when you juice, you tend to get rid of, especially in fruit, um, that fiber, and it's mostly sugar. So you're still getting nutrients, but you're absorbing like more of that sugar because you're not getting that fiber. So I always recommend, um, you know, just a smoothie instead and just throwing all that goodness in there and blending it up real good. Also a really easy way and quick way to make soup too. So if anybody actually, any of the families at BYA could use a blender, um, please let me know because that is my next mission is to get some blenders um, to hand out. So you can like text me or email me or whatever is easiest. And I'll actually put my email in here. Oh, is it the BYA email? I put it on this, um, on the contact us slide. Oh my gosh, which is right in front of me. <laughs> This is one of those days, just uh, the computer freezing, you know. <laughs> it's Friday, it's winter break time. Oh my gosh, definitely is. Well, does anybody else have any questions for us? 
Lily asks, what are some advanced exercises would you recommend for somebody who has chronic pain? Oh, um, good question. If it's chronic pain, I would need to know exactly like where you're having chronic pain. Um, if it's chronic pain, we really have to look into that before doing any type of exercise. Um, Cause chronic pain can be, it can be caused by nerve. By nerve, so yeah, I wouldn't, I would have to definitely evaluate the chronic pain first before recommending any type of exercise. So yeah, sorry, Mui. <laughs> but definitely I uh, contact me if when you stop me at BPYA if you want to talk. Well, you know, about I, as a person who kind of lives with chronic pain sometimes, that's one thing about chronic pain is you always can't tell where it's at. It's like, I know with mine, Sometimes I wish it was, oh, only my arm was hurting, but there's days where my body hurts. And yeah. you know, I know when I walk and stuff, sometimes I feel better, but it really is hard to, I know, you know, especially if somebody's open enough to use the word chronic. Most of the time when we speak of chronic pain, it's like just understanding that, you know, our body hurts, you know, sometimes different joints, different, you know, stuff. But, um, but um, I, 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 you know, it, that's a good, I mean, cause I, I know food can make pain better because I could tell when my diet's off, my pain is different, um, especially with sugar. But um, I thought it was a good question. I just, I just was trying to, you know, let you know most of the time when, I know when I have to use the word chronic, it's just people that like sometimes our body just hurts and it's hard to, hard to explain where the pain is coming from. Yeah. yeah. Like for example, like, so if you have that sciatic pain and it's shooting down your leg, there is a starting point from it and that could affect, like it started in your shoulder, but now it's affecting a different part of your body. Um, for back and joint pain, um, there's so many different exercises. I can't pinpoint one, but for joint pain, definitely do not stop moving. As um, I believe Jessica has mentioned, she'll, she'll walk and sometimes the pain goes away temporarily probably. Um, but exercising, stretching for back exercises, um, I wouldn't say any extension, a lot of, a lot of stretching. Um, I would not, depending on how you're feeling. I definitely, this is more of a one-on-one -on -one thing, I think, because I don't want to give you <laughs> some type of exercise to do and it's, it's just going to make it worse. Um, but if you can go for those for walks and that will temporarily relieve the pain, I would do it. Um, but there's no, ed I would not do an advanced exercise if you have chronic back and joint pain. I would take it back to the basics and do Maybe. light stretching. Mm -hmm. Oh no, so sorry. Oh, yeah. Do you think that um, would an Epsom salt bath help to absorb some of that magnesium, like loosen up the muscles and absorb some magnesium? But I guess it's hard sometimes, right? Because maybe what heat could be good for one injury, but not necessarily good for another. Well, yeah, that's why I was, yeah, because if you're inflamed, I wouldn't apply heat. Yeah. It's more, if it's chronic pain, it has to, I have, it would have to be more of a one-on-one -on -one, um, talk about it. Um, because inflammation, and if you put heat on it, if you massage it, it can make it worse. And now you're immobile. We don't want you to make it mobile. We want you to just get back to where you were. Or if you are still walking, if you're still mobile, we want you to stay in that stage. We don't want to immobilize you or immobilize you. Um, so really good advice. Yeah. So Epsom, I mean, yes, Epsom salt baths, they do work because they help with the soreness. Um, so that's, that would work. Um, definitely if you do, if you do exercise and you feel like inflammation coming on icing, 
and resting. Um, so yeah, there's definitely remedies, but depending on how the person is feeling, more evaluation. Absolutely, it's like that bio individual. Yeah, that's why it's like so. It's so hard to even talk about immune health. Um, so that is, I guess, more kind of widely applied, but it's still, it just like depends on the individual and like what's going on with them. Strengthen, I mean, to strengthen your back, if you have resistance bands, again, you can't, I wouldn't recommend advanced exercising until you've actually done the basics. So if you have a resistance band, pulling, strengthening your back muscles, your, um, your lats, your latissimus dorsi, creating and creating muscle, so if you have a resistance band or light weights, you can even use a can that's probably a pound or two pounds and do rowing. I don't know if you can see me, but you can bend, do bent over rowing like this, this motion. And you're contracting your scapula together. That helps with creating muscle. But with that, if you do have back pain, you also have to focus on, well, why do I have back pain? Is my core, people say core strength, is my posture terrible? It's because your core also needs to be strengthened because what elongates us is, is, our, abdom is our abdominals. It's also stre strengthening there will help with the back pain because now you're contracting your abdominals, you're protecting your back, protecting your hips. So there's a lot that goes in there. It goes into protecting your back and strengthening your back. Thanks, great advice. I like that, that rowing move yeah. exercise. I haven't thought about that in a long time. So it's like gymnastics days, but yeah, that's like a really good one. <laughs> yeah, so I've been doing like heavy lifting, um, bench press, squatting, and if you don't have that tight core, if your breathing is not right, you are risking injuring your back big time. So if your core isn't in the right, if you're not breathing correctly, oh man. <laughs> so those are, there's a lot of things that go into strengthening your back. Good question. Definitely see me. Stop me when you see me. <laughs> Another question. I know we're past time, 637. Okay. Do you have any questions that came up that you wanted to answer, Simone? No, I think that was everything. Um, Araceli isn't online, so I'll probably just reach out to her one-on-one -on -one with her question. Um, I think everybody else is, I answered. And Keisha's not online right now, so I'll reach out to her. But yeah, I think, I think we're good. That was awesome. I think that was really good to do before the holiday. <laughs> <laughs> on Simone thank you for everyone thank you so much I hope everybody has a wonderful happy holiday and stays safe and stays well and and yeah <laughs> bye mm.